Welcome back to RG Geek. I'm Chuck, and hold on, seems like Vladnerd has something to say. In an ideal world, YouTubers would take care of you guys, and a lot more YouTubers would have this conversation with you. All right, Vlad, let's talk about it. I'm never buying the RG Cube in order to, well, review it for you guys. And don't get me wrong, if you have the RG Cube, enjoy it. It's a good device. You know what? I'm not gonna either. But to be fair, if you want to play those systems, I do already have an Odin Pro and an ROG Ally. But that's kind of the point, isn't it? It's just, we have so many of these devices already. Why keep buying them? But the thing with Anbernek is that they have what I can only describe as a poisonous strategy to basically flood the market with devices every so often. Like my good friend Ross actually pointed out. At this point, they've been releasing devices at a breakneck pace, about three weeks per device. Whoa, hey Russ, nice to see you. And this can be a good thing if you're just now getting into handhelds and you want to make sure you get the one that fits you the best. But the problem is that there's a lot of fatigue with everyone else who's already bought a similar device over the past couple years. Every time Ambernick releases a new device, it seems to be a little bit of an upgrade, but it also is kind of incremental. And so sometimes it just doesn't justify buying a whole new device just because a couple things are better than previously. Not only that, the insane pace that they have been releasing all these devices means that nobody can really enjoy the ones that they have before a new one comes out and all that FOMO starts kicking in again. At this point, myself and many others just want time to play these devices so we can find out what we like and what we don't like before we move on to the next one. Yeah, I have to admit, I was shocked when I heard that too. And I believe it's true. Every three weeks is really overkill. And Bernick knows that this is the finish line type of device for most people. And by finish line type of device, I mean people will stop buying new handhelds when they finally get their hands on a 4x3 decent enough handheld which can actually allow them to enjoy, you know, most of their favorite platforms like PS2. Honestly though, what I really wanted was a simple retro handheld, just a D-pad, that would play everything up to original PlayStation perfectly. Come hang out with Russ from Retro Game Core, Mash Tech, and me at Ludo. A gaming event just outside Berlin in a renovated train station on September 6th through 9th. We have hostel-style accommodations upstairs so you can wake up, enjoy a continental breakfast, and get your game on with everything from Atari Pong to Quest 3 VR. Eat, sleep, game, repeat. Head over to ludo.events to sign up. People inherently are searching for the perfect device, and up until they get served with something close to their definition of perfect, they will buy this, 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 this. And this is what, what's happening. So I personally say, the RG35XXSP is pretty close to the perfect retro console. Well, for me. Let me dig a little deeper into that. Now, what do I personally mean when I talk about my ideal handheld? Well, here are my criteria. Musts for me or a screen that is a 4.3 or 1.1 aspect ratio, preferably 3.5 inch. As you see here, the SP covers that perfectly. We've got a nice 4.3 screen. I actually prefer 640 by 480, so it shows those old systems perfectly. As far as power, I'd like to play up to the original PlayStation. It has to have a really good D-pad, so accurate D-pad, and good feeling. So far, the SP is uh, maxing out at all these criteria. The shell, I would prefer a clam shell, so I can uh, quickly close it and it'll go to sleep and I'll wake it right back up. I'd ideally like in Canoli if it would go to sleep and then after a certain time, say a half hour, um, shut down. As for UI, I would like something like Emulation Station and here you go on Canoli, I've got uh, Emulation Station. For battery, I'd like to have at least uh, six hours of battery life and here we go, eight hours on the SP. There's connectivity, I want to have uh, Wi-Fi. And there's some Wi-Fi here. Of course, the work in progress it doesn't always connect. They say they're working on this issue. You can usually just change your password and then change it back and then it connects. Wi-Fi lets me have uh, retro achievements, uh, wirelessly transferring files and scraping box art descriptions and manuals. So I could say, go to a game here. I can say, go down to Balloon Kid. I can uh, say, view game manual. Boom, there it is. There's a beautiful game manual ready to read in all of its glory. As far as saving and loading, I'd like that to be automatic. And if I go into game settings here, 
I go down to auto save load, there it is. There's the option. Don't even have to go into RetroArch. Volume, I want to have physically on the device. That may seem like a strange request. If I remember my first retro handheld that uh, had a power button. <laughs> I did not have any uh, volume controls. There, that's cute, isn't it? Dingo Digital. Nice. Okay. <laughs> and for power, I would like it to be charged via USB-C, as is the standard these days. And this does have that USB-C charging. And one of nice things when it's plugged in, you can also um, tap the power button and you'll see the uh, current uh, battery power. That's really handy. Now let's get into the nice to haves. Ideally, I'd like to have quiet buttons. As you can see, the SP does not fulfill that request. There are uh, mods you can do on it, but I'm also like, it doesn't bother me enough to take the device apart. Uh, for Pico 8, I would like to natively be able to just go straight into Splore. So there's Pico 8, and there's Splore. There I am, I'm right in. And I can play my uh, Pico 8 games, like this clock here. All right, let's get out of here. Options, shut down Pico 8. Boom. I'd ideally like to have the platforms in chronological order. And with this theme here, the canvas theme, you can see I've got 1977, 82, 83, and all of my platforms are in chronological order from when they were released. And I just love that. Okay, I'll now attempt to pair my AirPod headphones with my SP. So let's go here in the Bluetooth. Let's open the case. Let's go down to pair Bluetooth device manually. And there they are on top. Let's see if they are actually connected. But to actually change the audio, I need to go down to system settings and check out audio output and they're not there so it's a fail so i find this to be very hit and miss and even when i do succeed in uh, connecting it i find that it's often the audio is out of sync but i do have one solution to that go over here to library and i play this file and now it's in sync on my SP. Uh, sleep, I would like to uh, be able to just close the hinge and put it to sleep, and as you can see. Well, maybe you can't see it, but it works. <laughs> it goes to sleep, and you can see it wake up there. There you go. But unfortunately, it uh, drains quite a lot of power. You can see over here what the uh, power drainage is. Oh, it's over here. No, where the title, title is. Oh, there it is, right there. There it is. <laughs> was my uh, power test. So it will drain power quite significantly, but um, say you just need to like change trains or buses or you need to just go to the bathroom real quick, you can just shut this, do what you need to do, open it back up. I prefer this to be a, a quick boot, but this does take a while and I'll have the boot time listed on the screen there for you. I'll actually just do it right now. Cannoli is my firmware of choice. I like how easy it is and how uh, beautiful it is to get around. That didn't take too long. If you can't notice the bezels, like for example here, let's try a game here. Uh, Super RC Pro-Am is one of my favorites. It's got bezels, but you barely notice them because they're just on a, the top screen of the handheld. So I think it's a win myself. So I would like to have overlays for um, GBA. Let's go grab that, show that off. So I set this up, I grabbed the uh, files off of the stock OS and put them on here. And there we have our bezel at the bottom of the screen. So it looks pretty awesome. As for price, I'd like to get this under 70 euros, as I did. As for analog sticks, I'd like to not have any, that way it's more portable. As you can see, this is a very small surface and this is incredibly affordable. I love this thing. Uh, it would be nice if it has video out. This does have video out right here. Uh, micro HDMI. 
And it would be nice to be able to connect Bluetooth controllers, which it does as well, via this screen here. That way you can connect your like 8-bit to controllers and things like that and play on your TV. So as far as I'm concerned, this is pretty close to an ideal retro experience. I truly think most people just want a retro handheld device, retro emulation device that they can stop at. And they keep buying a newer one, a newer one, a newer one, because all of these handhelds are engineered to have something missing from the list of things that we want. I personally like to look at it this way. I want a small handheld that can play all the retro games with the D-pad perfectly. And if I want to play those harder to run systems, I'd want a bigger handheld like an ROG Ally or a Steam Deck or an Odin 2, which is more suitable with an analog stick and the 16 by 9 screen. Some SP models had problems with the batteries literally burning and catching fire. Okay, you have a point there. But I just want to say, be sure if you get these SPs to always charge them on low voltage from a USB-A outlet or connect them directly to a laptop. Never use fast charging. Please subscribe. If you haven't, you would do me a huge favor. Blood Nerd is such a small channel that, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, every flipping subscriber and every flipping like helps me a lot. It helps the algorithm. I personally hate when YouTubers say this. Okay, Vlad, I won't say it this time then. Except to say, subscribe to Vlad Nerd. He makes awesome content. So, until next time, my dear beautiful nerd. Don't forget that I love you. I always did, and I always will. Oh, that's so sweet. And right back at you. See you next time. Bye.